and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today we're going to be discussing the word goodbye and why you need to stop using it. Believe it or not, we hardly ever say goodbye. It's something that just doesn't roll off the tongue and it sounds quite formal. You might see it written down or hear it in films, but on a general day-to-day -day basis you won't hear goodbye. In this video, I am going to give you loads of alternatives to goodbye. I'm going to give you casual and slang ones that you can use with friends and family, and I'm also going to give you more formal ones, more old-fashioned ones, and ones that you can use in business situations. I will also try to differentiate between American and British English, as I know some of you find that really interesting and helpful. So this video is perfect for improving your vocabulary. But if you want to improve your listening and pronunciation even further, I highly recommend the special method of combining reading actual books with listening to audiobooks. Let me explain this method. Take a book that you have already read in English or a book that you would like to read in English. I've got loads of recommendations in the description box down below and read that book whilst listening to the audiobook version. It sounds excessive, but it works. Reading alone will not help you with your pronunciation in English because most frequently how a word is written does not correspond with how a word is pronounced. Look at there, there and there, for example. They're all spelt differently, but all pronounced in the same way. Reading a book alone will not show you that. However, if you then introduce an audiobook, you will start to learn these differences and you will start to learn the pronunciation of words. If you listen to a word as you read it, your brain will start to make the connections and next time you see that word, you'll know how to pronounce it and next time you hear that word, you will know how to spell it. It is such an effective method and the best part is that you can get one free audiobook, that's a 30-day free trial on Audible if you click on the link in the description box and sign up then you can download one of my audiobook recommendations. Give it a try, it works. Right, let's get started with the lesson. I'm going to begin with casual ways of saying goodbye. The first one I think most of you will know it is bye. Bye on its own is really frequently used. It's just so easy to say and it's a word you can say with a smile. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Number two, a little extension of that, is bye-bye or bye-bye. Now, we use this in a different situation to just buy on its own, and it's important that you know this. Bye-bye is a little more cute, a little more childish and infantile. It's something you'd likely say to a child, bye-bye. However, we do use it sometimes if we're trying to be very cute or friendly. Bye-bye, see you. That brings me on to my next one, which is see you later. See you later, we often say see ya instead of see you. See you later, this is one that we say if we already have plans to see someone again in that same day. If we don't have plans, we can say number four, which is see you soon. If you want to be really casual, you can use number five, which is just see ya, and that is very, very informal. Now, number six is a little bit more advanced. You will look really good if you use this around a native speaker. This one is, I'm heading off. This is a good way to start to leave an event that you don't want to be at anymore. To head off is a phrasal verb meaning to begin to leave, to head off. Saying, oh, I'm heading off, I'll see you soon, is a great way to start the goodbye process, which we all know can be a little lengthy. A shortened down version of that, number seven, is just, I'm off. Right, I'm off, see you. That's very casual again. Another one that we can use, which is very British, is I'm going to make a move, or I've got to make a move. To make a move is to leave. I need to make a move. In America, they are more likely to say, I'm going to make tracks, or I've got to make tracks. And that means to drive away. You're making tracks with your car. All of these phrases are normally preceded with right. You say right as you're getting up. Right, I'm off, right. I'm going to make tracks. Another one, again very British, is, oh, I've got to get going. I've got to get going. 
practice that one on your own a couple of times because I've got to get going, I've got to get going is quite a tongue twister. Twister. Ah! I can't believe the word tongue twister was a tongue twister for me. That is hilarious. <laughs> okay, number 11 is I must be going. Oh, what's the time? I must be going. I must be off. A very American one is I gotta take off. I gotta take off. In British English, take off is really for clothes, to take off your clothes and to take off as an aeroplane. An aeroplane takes off. Um, but in America, that means to leave as well. 14, very, very casual is have a good one. And that means have a good day but it's very warm and friendly. Have a good one. And the last one, number 15, is talk to you later. Talk to you later. It's a bit of an extension of see you later. Talk to you later implies that you might send a text or make a phone call to them later that day. Right, let's talk about formal, professional and old fashioned ways of saying goodbye in English. The first one is very American and it's used in business or service situations. It's have a great day. You have a great day. And I was so surprised when I went to the USA because everyone wanted me to have a great day. <laughs> and like the first couple of times I was like, oh, that's nice. And then just when I realized that everyone said it, I realized that no one really wanted me to have a great day. <laughs> the British version of this would be have a lovely day. And that is slightly more sincere. We don't use it as often, so it sort of means more. An alternative to this is take care or you take care, or you take care now, and that's quite warm and friendly. If you want to say goodbye to somebody that's going on a journey or is driving away, you can say, have a safe journey, or have a good journey, that's British. And in American English, they're quite likely to say, drive safe, or you drive safe now. Number five, more formal, it was nice to see you, or it was nice seeing you. Either or, nice to see or nice seeing. If you've just met the person for the first time, it was nice to meet you, it was lovely meeting you. Nice and lovely are interchangeable, of course. The next one, very, very posh, this is very old fashioned, is farewell. You might see this one in books and movies set in the past. We don't tend to use it now, but I think it's important for you to understand it. Another old fashioned one is ta Now this is slang, but it's very old fashioned, so I put it in this list. Older people might say ta um, to you, which means goodbye, obviously, because it's in this video. And another one is ta-ta or ta-ta for now. Um, again, very old fashioned and a little bit posher. The last one, if you want somebody to keep in contact with you, you can say, stay in touch. And that's a nice way of ending a conversation. That's the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I really hope you did because I gave you a lot of vocabulary there. Don't forget to download your free audiobook. The link is in the description box along with my audiobook and book recommendations. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram, and I've got my Twitter. And I shall see you soon for another lesson. Mwah. Pick a book that you have already read in an in an in an in an in an I have not thought of Crazy Frog in like five years. <laughs> Just, wow, it's a long time ago, wasn't it? Right, let's get started with the lesson. I'm going to begin with casual phrases. <laughs> so casual, I can't even say the R. Um, 